Hey Don, I just wanted to say welcome back and wanted to answer your question. What happened to YouTube? Well, it didn't really start, you know, the whole situation of the atheist community didn't start with Thunderfoot. First, it was about two months ago, there was a big thing about Christians saying, oh, well, the atheists won't call out their own. So a lot of atheists were going and calling out other atheists to prove a point to say, ha, ah, look, look how cool we are. We are calling out our own. And what happened was it pretty much just turned into a trend, like it was the cool thing to do, and I, I don't really understand it, but that's how it went. Right after the calling out your own was a bunch of people saying, there never was an atheist community. Well, that's kind of bullshit. Whether they want to be associated with certain people or not, they're still atheists on YouTube making videos about religion. That includes them in an atheist community. No matter how cohesive, or how attractive, or wonderful, or crappy it is, it's there. Now, when we had people like Defender of Reason saying atheist community, nobody ever told her there's no atheist community. They only started saying that once they started disagreeing with other people because they were calling each other out. It's more bullshit. And I think what really, really was the big driving part was when Coughlin called out Pat Condell, which I don't really understand because to me what Pat Condell was saying was, here's choice A and choice B. Choice A is bad, and it will kill you. Choice B, you know, is also bad, and it might kill you, but it might not. So let's support this one. The point of that wasn't to say, I support this forever and always. It's, let's support it for the sake of this election, this one time, because whatever the other option was, was definitely worse. So I don't understand why people had such a big tizzy about Pat Condell supporting the UKIP. I mean, okay, I know they're horrible. Hate mail me, do whatever, okay? I don't care about the UKIP. Or Pat Condell, really. But the point is, he just was trying to say support them to make sure that the lesser of the evils wins. Isn't that what we do in every election? I mean, seriously, we always just support the lesser evil, the guy or girl, that we think is going to screw up the economy the, the least, or the country, that pretty much made the calling out our own trend a lot more high profile, and then Thunderfoot attacked Islam for censoring South Park, you know, we know that bullshit, and again, I'm not like a rabid Thunderfoot supporter or detractor, but he was saying bad things about a religion that has bad things. We say bad things about Christianity all the time, or Mormons, or Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, we haven't even really gotten started on those two yet, but it's coming, I'm sure. But anyway, Thunderfoot was expressing anger towards an oppressive society that's creeping its way into the UK. And the UK is trying to fight them off. Well, maybe Thunderfoot has a little foresight. Maybe he's attacking it now before it comes to American soil and we're trying to fight them off here. I mean, why should we have to do that if we can stop it before it ever happens? Okay, and then that brings me to the point of freedom. I know we just had Memorial Day here and a lot of people you know, a lot of the Americans don't appreciate the freedoms that they have. But, in our past, our forefathers fought with their lives. They gave their own lives and their blood for us to have the freedom that we have now. And whenever somebody mentions that about possibly the moderate Muslims overthrowing the radicals so that they can have a more peaceful, you know, free country, a lot of other people are like, well, you can't expect them to give up their lives. Why? Why can't they? We did that here, and a lot of people still do. I mean, just look at the statistics. 
whenever we went to war back, what, 10 years ago or whatever, the armed services seen drastic increases in enrollment because Americans wanted to defend their country. They signed up and they went out. They knew they were possibly giving their life to fight the good fight for their country. But why is it so unacceptable for us to expect that the moderate Muslims might suffer some casualties in order to have a better, brighter future for their children? That's how it goes. It's a necessary evil. You can't win your freedom without lives being lost. That's just how it goes. History has proven this time and time again. Now, how many of you out there would actually give your life for your freedoms? Now, let's ignore the war that's going on overseas, but here in the U.S. If that war were to come here, how many of you would fight? Because I guarantee the last thing that any marching standing army would see if they were marching down my street invading my home and putting my family at danger they're going to see me my neighbors and my friends down the barrels of our guns fighting back and I know there's there's a big stigma about expressing any extreme views here on YouTube I mean the last thing anybody wants to do is be called a bigot or an extremist or the blow them away American but you know what even though nobody really wants to be the blow em away American, those are the guys in our army. Those are the guys who are willing to fight and give up their lives. They're also another necessary evil. Now, I'm not trying to be extreme. I'm not trying to say I want there to be violence. I don't want to kill people. That's not what I'm about. But if it comes to it, I will. I will and not think twice about it. I won't regret it. 